It was one of those perfect summer mornings that seemed to beg for something memorable. The sun shone brightly over the manicured lawns of Maplewood Estates, a picturesque suburban neighborhood where each house was neatly uniform and the air was filled with the hum of sprinklers. Lori Williams stood in her kitchen, sipping her coffee, watching her two children, Jake and Chloe, through the window. They were already busy with their plans, chattering excitedly about their new project, a lemonade stand. For weeks, Jake, eight years old and ever curious, had been obsessed with the idea of starting his own business. He'd been watching YouTube videos about kids selling lemonade and asked Lori endless questions about pricing, customers, and what it meant to turn a profit. Chloe Six and Jake's biggest cheerleader was just as thrilled but for a different reason. She loved the idea of decorating the stand and meeting neighbors. Together they had come up with a plan to sell lemonade for one dollar a cup and donate half the earnings to the local animal shelter. Lori couldn't have been prouder. She saw it as an opportunity to teach her kids about responsibility, charity, and the joy of hard work. The project was simple but full of heart. The trio had spent the previous evening painting the wooden stand that Jake's dad had built. Bright yellow with white trim, it bore the hand-painted sign Jake and Chloe's lemonade in bold, cheerful letters. The kids had even added a tagline helping animals, one cup at a time. By mid-morning, the stand was set up at the edge of their front yard, just a few feet from the sidewalk. Jake had a stack of disposable cups ready, a cooler full of ice, and a jug of freshly made lemonade Lori's family recipe with just the right amount of tartness and sweetness. Chloe had insisted on adding a special touch, so she tied pink ribbons around the stand's legs and sprinkled glitter on the countertop. They were ready. The first customer was Miss Shelton, the elderly widow who lived three houses down. She shuffled over with her little dog, Max, in tow, and bought two cups. Jake was elated when she handed him a five-dollar bill and told him to keep the change. The kids beamed with pride and Lori, watching from the porch, couldn't help but smile. Soon more neighbors stopped by parents pushing strollers, joggers pausing for a refreshment, and even teenagers curious about the commotion. The lemonade stand quickly became the talk of the street. People admired the kids' initiative and praised Lori for raising such thoughtful children. Jake took his role as manager seriously, carefully counting the money and making change, while Chloe handed out cups with a big smile. Within an hour, they had made nearly $40, and Jake was already talking about expanding their menu to include cookies. But not everyone was charmed by the scene. Lori first noticed the gray sedan slowly cruising past their house around noon. She didn't think much of it at first, assuming it was just another neighbor curious about the stand. But when the car parked across the street and the driver, a middle-aged man in a crisp polo shirt and khakis, stepped out with a clipboard in hand, Lori felt a twinge of unease. The man strode toward the stand with the kind of brisk determination that signaled he wasn't there for lemonade. His face was set in a stern expression, and he exuded an air of authority. Lori recognized him immediately Mr. West, the president of the Maplewood Estates Homeowners Association. She had only interacted with him a few times, but those encounters had been enough to know that he took his role very seriously, too seriously, some would say. Good afternoon, Mr. West said, his voice clipped and formal. He glanced at the stand, then at Jake and Chloe, who were now standing quietly, sensing something was wrong. Is this your stand? Jake nodded hesitantly. Yes, sir. We're selling lemonade to raise money for the animal shelter. How commendable, Mr. West replied, though his tone lacked any warmth. He flipped through the papers on his clipboard, his eyes scanning the fine print. However, I'm afraid this lemonade stand is in violation of Maplewood Estates bylaws. Lori, who had been standing on the porch, quickly walked over. Excuse me, Mr. West, she said, keeping her voice polite but firm. What exactly is the problem here? Mr. West adjusted his glasses and gave her a condescending look. Section 12, paragraph 4 of the bylaws prohibits any unlicensed business activities within the community. This includes temporary structures such as this lemonade stand. Lori blinked, stunned. It's a lemonade stand, for goodness sake. It's not a business, it's just a fun summer activity for the kids. Regardless, Mr. West said, his tone icy, rules are rules. Unlicensed businesses disrupt the aesthetic harmony of the neighborhood and could pose liability risks. I must ask you to dismantle the stand immediately. 
By now, several neighbors had gathered, drawn by the commotion. Miss Shelton, holding a fresh cup of lemonade, frowned and muttered, Oh, for heaven's sake. Another neighbor, Mr. Lopez, crossed his arms and shook his head in disbelief. Lori felt her temper rising. This is ridiculous. They're just kids trying to do something good for the community. Don't you think you're overreacting? Mr. West's expression hardened. Miss Cross, I am simply enforcing the rules that everyone in this community agreed to when they moved here. If you have an issue, I suggest you take it up with the board. In the meantime, failure to comply could result in a formal notice and subsequent fines. Jake's face crumpled and Chloe clung to Lori's leg, her eyes wide with confusion. Lori took a deep breath, forcing herself to stay calm for her kid's sake. Fine, she said through gritted teeth. We'll take it down for now. But this isn't over. Mr. West gave a curt nod, as if he'd just won a battle, and walked back to his car. The neighbors lingered, murmuring among themselves about the absurdity of the situation. Lori crouched down to comfort her kids, who were now on the verge of tears. It's okay, she said softly. We'll figure this out. I promise. As she began dismantling the stand, Lori's mind raced. She wasn't the type to back down from a fight, especially when it involved her children. If the homeowner association wanted a battle, she was ready to give them one. Little did Mr. West know, he had just picked the wrong family to mess with. The day after Mr. West shut down the lemonade stand, the atmosphere in the Williams household was tense. Jake and Chloe were unusually quiet, their excitement from the day before replaced with a somber confusion. Lori couldn't get the image of Mr. West's smug expression out of her mind. It wasn't just about the lemonade stand anymore, it was about principle. Something about the way he had handled the situation felt wrong. She couldn't shake the feeling that the homeowner association president's actions were less about enforcing rules and more about exerting unnecessary power. Lori decided she needed to act. She started her morning with coffee in one hand and the homeowner association bylaws in the other. The thick document had been part of her welcome package when she moved into Maplewood Estates years ago, but like most residents, she had only skimmed it. Now, she studied it intently, determined to find the clause Mr. West had cited. The bylaws were a maze of legal jargon, filled with vague phrases like aesthetic harmony and community standards. After nearly an hour of reading, Lori found the section Mr. West had referenced section 12, paragraph 4, which indeed mentioned a prohibition against unlicensed businesses. However, the language was ambiguous. It specified that the rule was intended to prevent large-scale commercial operations, not temporary or charitable activities like a kid's lemonade stand. That's it, Lori muttered to herself, slamming the binder shut. He's twisting the rules to suit his own agenda. Fueled by this discovery, she decided to reach out to her neighbors. She knew from the previous day's commotion that some of them were on her side, but she needed more support if she was going to take on the homeowner association. Lori started with Miss Shelton, who had been one of the stand's first customers. When Lori knocked on her door, Miss Shelton answered with a warm smile. Lori, dear, come in. I was just thinking about you and those sweet kids of yours. What a shame. What happened with that lemonade stand? Lori wasted no time. Thank you, Miss Shelton. That's actually why I'm here. I've been looking into the homeowner association rules and I think Mr. West overstepped. I want to do something about it, but I need to know if other neighbors feel the same way. Oh, absolutely, Miss Shelton said, her expression turning serious. That man's been a thorn in everyone's side for years. Last month, he fined me $100 because my lawn ornaments didn't match the neighborhood aesthetic. Can you believe that? Lori shook her head. That's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. This isn't just about my kids' lemonade stand, it's about all of us being unfairly targeted. Miss Shelton agreed to sign a petition Lori was planning to draft and offered to spread the word to other neighbors. Encouraged, Lori continued her visits, stopping by Mr. Lopez's house next. Mr. Lopez greeted her with a grim nod. I was wondering when you'd show up, he said, leading her to his porch. West's been harassing people since the day he got elected. My wife and I got fined last year for having a swing set in the backyard said it was an unapproved structure it's for our kids, for crying out loud. Lori explained her plan to challenge Mr. West's interpretation of the rules, 
and Mr. Lopez eagerly offered his support. By the end of the day, Lori had spoken to over a dozen neighbors, many of whom shared similar stories of unreasonable fines and arbitrary enforcement of homeowner association regulations. It was clear that Mr. West's reign of control was widely resented. That evening, Lori posted a summary of her experience on the neighborhood's social media group. She recounted the lemonade stand incident, explained her findings from the bylaws, and invited others to share their stories. The response was overwhelming. Within hours, dozens of comments flooded the post, with neighbors expressing their frustrations and offering their support. One comment stood out. It was from a woman named Sarah, who lived in a different part of Maplewood Estates. Sarah claimed she had faced a similar issue with her son's bake sale the previous year. The homeowner association had fined her $200 and threatened legal action if she didn't shut it down. It's not just you, Sarah wrote. This is a pattern, and it's about time someone stood up to West. Encouraged by the groundswell of support, Lori decided to take her fight to the homeowner association board. She composed a formal letter requesting a hearing to address the lemonade stand incident and broader concerns about Mr. West's leadership. The letter was polite but firm, citing the ambiguous language in the bylaws and the need for clarity and fairness in their enforcement. Lori dropped off the letter at the homeowner association office the next morning and waited for a response. In the meantime, Lori began digging deeper into Mr. West's history. She learned that he had been homeowner association president for nearly a decade, winning re-election unopposed each time. Many residents had simply accepted his authority, assuming there was no point in challenging him. But Lori was different. She wasn't afraid to stand up for what was right, especially when her kids were involved. Her investigation led her to a surprising discovery Mr. West had financial ties to a local landscaping company that many residents were required to use under homeowner association rules. This revelation added a new layer to her suspicions. Was Mr. West enforcing the rules to benefit the community, or was he using his position to serve his own interests? By the end of the week, Lori received a reply from the Homeowner Association Board. The letter was curt and formal, informing her that her request for a hearing had been scheduled for the following month. Though it wasn't the immediate resolution she had hoped for, it was a step in the right direction. As the days passed, Lori's resolve only grew stronger. She spent her evenings compiling evidence, including the testimonies of her neighbors and the ambiguous language of the bylaws. She even contacted a local journalist who had covered community issues in the past. The journalist was intrigued by her story and agreed to meet with her to discuss the possibility of writing an article about the homeowner association's overreach. By the end of the chapter, Lori was no longer just a frustrated mother fighting for her kid's lemonade stand. She had become the leader of a grassroots movement, determined to bring accountability and fairness to Maplewood Estates. And while she didn't know exactly what lay ahead, she knew one thing for certain she wasn't backing down. The day of the homeowner association hearing was fast approaching, but for Lori, the battle had already extended far beyond the boundaries of Maplewood Estates. What had started as a simple neighborhood disagreement over a lemonade stand had spiraled into a full-blown community uprising. Lori's social media post had gone viral within the neighborhood, and even residents from other nearby communities began to comment, sharing their own frustrations with overreaching homeowner associations. One of those comments came from a woman named Laura, who claimed her homeowner association had fined her for parking her car slightly crooked in her own driveway. It's like they think they own the property instead of us, Laura wrote. The more Lori read, the more she realized that her fight wasn't just about her children's lemonade stand, it was about standing up to a system that had become a tool for power-hungry individuals like Mr. West. Lori decided to channel the momentum into something bigger. She created an online petition demanding reforms to the Maplewood Estates Homeowner Association, including clearer rules, a limit on fines, and term limits for board members. Within 48 hours, the petition had over 200 signatures, including many from Maplewood Estates residents. Some comments were particularly passionate we've had enough of arbitrary fines and micromanagement. It's time for change. I was fined for planting flowers that weren't homeowner association approved. Flowers. Who gets fined for that? Thank you, Lori, for standing up to this nonsense. We're with you. Word spread quickly, and soon a local journalist, Michelle Turner, reached out to Lori for an interview. Michelle worked for a popular community newspaper and had a reputation for exposing local scandals. 
Intrigued by the details Lori had shared about Mr. West's financial ties to the landscaping company, Michelle agreed to dig deeper. When the article was published, it sent shockwaves through Maplewood Estates. The headline read Homeowner Association Overreach Residents Push Back Against Power Hungry President. The article detailed Lori's experience, highlighted other residents' grievances, and exposed the questionable relationship between Mr. West and the landscaping company. It wasn't long before the local TV station picked up the story. A camera crew arrived at Lori's house one morning, eager to film a segment for the evening news. Lori was initially hesitant she didn't want to draw unwanted attention to her family, but she realized this was an opportunity to bring even more awareness to the issue. Standing in front of the now dismantled lemonade stand, she told the reporter about her kid's simple dream of raising money for charity and how the homeowner association had turned it into a nightmare. The segment aired that night, and the reaction was immediate. Neighbors stopped by to express their support, and Lori's phone buzzed nonstop with messages of encouragement. Even strangers from outside the community reached out, thanking her for speaking up. While Lori's side of the story gained traction, Mr. West was not one to back down. A few days after the news segment aired, the Homeowner Association released an official statement defending their actions. The statement, signed by Mr. West, read the rules of Maplewood Estates exist to maintain the beauty and harmony of our community. While we understand the frustration of some residents, it is our duty to enforce these rules fairly and consistently. Unlicensed businesses, no matter how well-intentioned, pose a liability risk to the Homeowner Association and must be addressed. The statement did little to quell the growing unrest. Many residents saw it as dismissive and out of touch. Some even began calling for Mr. West's resignation, a sentiment that gained traction on the neighborhood's social media page. The night of the hearing finally arrived. The Homeowner Association board meeting was held in the community center, a modest building at the edge of the neighborhood. Lori arrived early with Jake and Chloe in tow, determined to show the board exactly who had been affected by their actions. Her neighbors showed up in droves, filling the small room to capacity. Some carried signs with slogans like Let Kids Be Kids and Stop the Homeowner Association Tyranny. As the meeting began, Mr. West took his seat at the head of the table, flanked by the other board members. He looked composed, but there was a flicker of unease in his eyes as he scanned the packed room. Lori couldn't help but feel a surge of confidence. The tide was turning. The hearing started with Mr. West presenting his case. He reiterated the Homeowner Association's stance, emphasizing the importance of enforcing the rules to maintain the community's standards. Allowing exceptions, he said, sets a dangerous precedent. We cannot pick and choose which rules to enforce. When it was Lori's turn to speak, she stepped up to the podium with a stack of papers in hand. She began by calmly recounting the events leading up to the shutdown of the lemonade stand, then moved on to her research. She pointed out the vague language in the bylaws, which left too much room for interpretation. She also presented examples of other homeowner associations in the area that allowed temporary stands and charitable activities, arguing that Maplewood Estates was out of step. But this isn't just about rules, Lori said, her voice steady but firm. It's about how those rules are enforced. When my kid's lemonade stand was shut down, it wasn't done with kindness or understanding it was done with threats and intimidation. That's not the kind of community I want to live in, and I don't think any of you do either. Her final point was the most damning. She revealed the financial ties between Mr. West and the landscaping company, suggesting a conflict of interest that undermined his credibility as homeowner association president. The room erupted in murmurs, and Mr. West's composure visibly cracked. As the hearing continued, more residents came forward to share their stories. A mother spoke about being fined for her children's chalk drawings on the sidewalk. An elderly man recounted how he was reprimanded for having a ramp installed for his wheelchair without prior approval. The stories painted a clear picture the homeowner association, under Mr. West's leadership, had lost sight of its purpose. By the end of the meeting, the board members were clearly overwhelmed by the public outcry. One of them, a woman named Linda, finally spoke up. I think it's clear that we need to reevaluate how we're enforcing the rules and whether those rules are serving the community as a whole. The crowd erupted in applause. For the first time, Lori felt a glimmer of hope. The board agreed to table the issue for further discussion, but not before voting to suspend any fines related to the lemonade stand incident. As the meeting adjourned, Lori was surrounded by neighbors thanking her for taking a stand. 
Jake and Chloe beamed with pride as they handed out cups of lemonade to celebrate the small victory. Though the fight wasn't over, Lori knew they had made significant progress. Mr. West, meanwhile, left the meeting with his head down, the once unshakable president now facing an uncertain future. In the days following the homeowner association meeting, Lori felt a cautious optimism. The board's decision to suspend fines related to the lemonade stand was a small but meaningful victory, a sign that the tide might be turning. Yet, she knew the battle was far from over. The broader issues vague bylaws, unchecked authority, and Mr. West's questionable leadership remained unresolved. Lori's determination only grew as she received more messages of support from neighbors, including some who had never spoken up before. Many shared stories of intimidation, excessive fines, and arbitrary enforcement of rules that seemed designed to benefit the homeowner association more than the community. Lori wasted no time in organizing her next steps. She decided to hold a neighborhood town hall, separate from the homeowner association's official meetings, to give residents a platform to discuss their concerns and brainstorm solutions. With the help of Ms. Shelton and Mr. Lopez, she distributed flyers, knocked on doors, and used the neighborhood's social media group to spread the word. The event was scheduled for a Saturday afternoon in the park, a neutral and welcoming space where people could gather without feeling the weight of the homeowner association's influence. The turnout exceeded Lori's expectations. Families arrived with picnic blankets, children played nearby, and the atmosphere felt lighter than it had in weeks. Lori stood at the front with a microphone borrowed from the local community center, addressing the crowd with a mix of nerves and determination. She began by recounting her own experience with the lemonade stand, then opened the floor for others to share their stories. One by one, residents came forward, their voices filled with frustration, anger, and in some cases, tears. A young couple spoke about being fined for having holiday lights up past January 1st, despite a family emergency delaying their removal. An elderly man described how he was forced to replace his fence at great expense because the homeowner association deemed it visually incompatible, even though it had stood for decades. As the stories unfolded, a pattern emerged the homeowner association, under Mr. West's leadership, seemed to prioritize control over community. People were fined not for genuine issues but for subjective, often petty infractions. The rules were applied inconsistently, and enforcement seemed to depend on personal vendettas or hidden agendas. Lori listened intently, taking notes and encouraging others to do the same. By the end of the town hall, she had collected a wealth of information that painted a damning picture of the homeowner association's operations. After the town hall, Lori worked late into the night compiling the stories into a comprehensive document. She included evidence of Mr. West's financial ties to the landscaping company, examples of vague and inconsistently enforced bylaws, and testimonials from residents. Her goal was to present a united front to the Homeowner Association Board at their next official meeting, demanding concrete changes. But as she reviewed her notes, Lori realized that change wouldn't come solely from exposing the Homeowner Association's flaws. Real change would require structural reforms, starting with the board itself. Lori began researching how homeowner association leadership was structured and discovered that the bylaws allowed for residents to call for a vote of no confidence in the president. It was a rarely used provision, but it provided a clear path forward if enough residents signed a petition. The board would be forced to hold a special election to determine whether Mr. West should remain in his position. Lori knew it was a bold move, but she also knew it was necessary. The time for half measures was over. Over the next two weeks, Lori and her growing network of supporters worked tirelessly to gather signatures. They went door to door, explaining the situation and urging neighbors to stand together. Most people were eager to sign, but a few hesitated, worried about potential retaliation. Lori reassured them, emphasizing the collective power of the community. They can't go after all of us, she said, her voice steady with conviction. By the deadline, they had collected more than enough signatures to trigger the vote. The special election was scheduled for a Saturday morning, and tensions were high in Maplewood Estates. Mr. West, clearly feeling the pressure, had launched a campaign to defend his record. He sent out glossy mailers touting his contributions to the community and warning of chaos if he were removed. But his efforts seemed to backfire, as residents increasingly saw his messaging as out of touch and self-serving. Lori, meanwhile, focused on unity. 
She organized small gatherings to discuss the future of the homeowner association, emphasizing transparency, fairness, and collaboration. On the day of the election, the community center was packed. Residents filled every chair, and many stood along the walls. The vote was conducted by secret ballot, ensuring that everyone could voice their opinion without fear of judgment or retaliation. Lori sat near the back, her heart pounding as the ballots were collected and counted. When the results were announced, the room erupted in applause by a decisive margin. The community had voted to remove Mr. West as president. Lori felt a wave of relief and pride, but she knew the work wasn't done. The next step was electing new leadership, and she was determined to ensure the board reflected the values of the community. Over the following weeks, a new president was elected Linda, the board member who had spoken up during the initial meeting. Linda was known for her fairness and approachability, and she quickly set to work addressing the issues that had plagued the homeowner association for years. The vague bylaws were rewritten with input from residents, focusing on clarity and fairness. Fines were capped at reasonable amounts, and exceptions were made for charitable activities like lemonade stands. Perhaps most importantly, term limits were introduced to prevent any one person from holding too much power for too long. For Lori, the victory was bittersweet. She was proud of what they had accomplished, but she knew the fight had taken a toll on her family. Jake and Chloe had been through a lot, and she wanted to ensure they could move forward with positive memories. To celebrate their victory, Lori helped them rebuild their lemonade stand, this time with the full blessing of the homeowner association. On a sunny Saturday morning, the stand reopened, drawing a crowd of neighbors who came to support the kids and enjoy a cup of lemonade. Jake and Chloe beamed with pride as they handed out cups, their excitement reignited. As Lori watched her children, she reflected on the journey they had been through. What had started as a small injustice had grown into a movement, uniting a fractured community and bringing about meaningful change. The battle had been hard fought, but it had shown her the power of standing up for what's right, even in the face of overwhelming opposition. For the first time in months, Maplewood Estates felt like a true community, a place where people looked out for one another and where even the smallest voices could make a difference. Lori smiled, knowing they had built something stronger than a neighborhood. They had built a home.